Hello, I'm Tom Palmer, and this is a short um, reading from the first chapter of my book, After the War. And After the War is about a group of children who survived the Holocaust. So if they were children and had been through the concentration camps um, and survived miraculously. And they came to England to um, live as refugees. Um, and many of them are, um, some of them are still alive and um, have, have families in England now. And it's, uh, it's a story about what, what happened after the, the, the dark, dark days of the Second World War and the Nazi oppression of the Jewish people. But it's also a story of hope and how um, refugees can come into a country um, and have have good lives and be welcomed and that's kind of what the whole book's about and hopefully the first chapter captures some of that it's a true story it's um i didn't make any of this up because it's all based on the testimony of of holocaust survivors who i have met and interviewed and, and read their their own stories even though he was afraid yossi forced himself to crawl to the window in the side of the airplane there were no seats, so he had to crouch and stay on all fours, as he and the other passengers were thrown about by turbulence. Outside, he could see a wall of white and a wing wobbling so hard it looked like it might fall off. Behind him, Yossi heard children cry out, the sound of at least one person being sick, and some laughter too. Come and sit down here, Yossi, a woman's voice called out. Yossi, did as he was told, scrambling along the floor of the Stirling bomber to rejoin the other children and adults sitting on blankets. Yossi loved aeroplanes. He should have been scared of them because the first time he'd seen one six years ago, at the, um, six years ago at the beginning of the war, a German bomber had tried to destroy his hometown in Poland. Then, over the following years, he'd seen bombs falling from British and American aeroplanes, targeting the factories where he was forced to work, but he still loved them, perhaps because aeroplanes were a sign that change was coming. And once he was in the concentration camps, Yossi was desperate for things to change. He was also fascinated by these powerful machines. How could a huge piece of metal with all those people on board take off and then land without breaking into pieces? He glanced at the faces of the two boys closest to him. Didn't it worry them? The boys in question were called Mordecai and Leo. Both of them were 15 years old, like Yossi, and both seemed to be focusing hard on what they were doing, that they were barely aware they were bouncing around in the clouds. Mordecai, short with dark hair, was reading an English book. Yossi admired him so much because he could hold a conversation in German, French, Czech, Russian and Polish. He also admired Mordecai could concentrate on reading, even now as they hurtled towards the ground. Tall, blonde-haired Leo was busy too. For most of the flight, he'd been trying to get a spool of wire that was jammed down the side of the fuselage of the plane. Yossi knew that Leo would plan to use the wire or trade it with someone. He was always on the lookout for an opportunity. Now the plane lunged suddenly to the left and some of the children called out in fear. Yossi dragged himself to the window again to look out. Squinting into the bright light, he could see a range of mountains ahead, blue sparkling water beyond and miles and miles of green fields. They were out of the clouds over England. This was a place they'd been told they would be safe. A place where there would be no German soldiers and no concentration camps. The only thing Yossi knew about England was a distant memory of his father's bicycle. It was very special, so special that the tyres needed to be imported from another country. On the tyres, moulded into rubber, the rubber, were the words made in England.